Hi everybody, on this episode, we're gonna go to heaven in a vision and we're gonna go in the kitchen and see what they're making. You're not gonna wanna miss it. I was taken to heaven by an angel with rainbow wings on the 31st night. I have a special guest with me today. She's a prophetic seer and an author, and she has had multiple trips to heaven. She is a woman after my own heart. Since you all know, I too have had multiple trips to heaven. So I was excited to read her book and have the opportunity to share her writings today. Donna Rigney had multiple heavenly visitations where she toured heaven and encountered the glory of God. In Donna's powerful book, she shares with you her vivid, detailed accounts of heaven. I was with this angel. I passed buildings. I saw, oh man, two-story buildings. I saw Hallelujah Boulevard with a gold plaque. People were dancing and shouting on Hallelujah Boulevard. I know it sounds crazy, but it's heaven. Duh. <laughs> The books are being opened in heaven. I saw the books being opened in heaven, and I saw the word revelation writ right over Jesus. And he said, I have sent the one who's going to enforce your blessing. Lori describes her tangible encounters with heaven that will draw you deeper into the heart of God so that you too can be set free from the unforgiveness that blocks you from heaven. I know it sounds crazy, but it's heaven. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Long for Truth. My name is Daniel Long. Sitting next to me is my lovely wife, Robin. Hi, everyone. So would you like to make a bundle of cash? Well, there's an easy way to do it. All you have to do is write a book about your experience in heaven. What did you see when you were there? And talk about all of the, the, the crazier, by the way, the better. And that's what we're going to be talking about today on this episode. We're also going to be looking at biblical passages about heaven. What does the Bible actually say about the Christian's final destiny. And why don't we go to a Bible passage right now? Colossians 3, 1 through 4. If then you've been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him. In glory. So we are to set our minds on things above, on heavenly things. Mm -hmm. But what you're going to hear in this video, the, the crazy stories about what heaven is like, well, these things are not described in the Bible, and some of them are ac actually heresy. Our first heaven visitor is Lori Ditto, and she talks about angel games. Now, about the angels. When you see an angel in his uniforms, when you see his wings, that is his uniform. I don't know where they put their wings because they, they sure look like they're definitely attached. I don't know how come I can't see their wings. So if they're just horsing around with Jesus, then they're not wearing their wings. And that's what was happening. All the angels were waiting because the ovens were baking bread. So while they were waiting, um, they were playing a game. And what kind of game uh, were they playing in heaven? There was this fruit, and the game is to eat the fruit and not let it get you all wet. The only person who's ever won this game to date, as far as I've been in heaven, is Jesus. And so everybody likes to play this game with this fruit, and, and the angel that God had chosen, the one that he was telling things about, took this little bitty bite, did good the first time. Before he could even begin to take the second bite, this fruit exploded on him. <laughs> and everybody was laughing. And Jesus laughs. And Jesus has the best belly laugh you can even imagine. His belly laugh is so funny. You will laugh when Jesus laughs. And when the Lord laughs, he has my laugh inside of him, and he has your laugh. Did you know that your laugh came out of the Lord? Lori, where does an angel store his wings when he's not wearing them? I don't know. Where does an angel store his wings? 
a wing locker, <laughs> a wing closet. Yeah, well, a wing locker because they're playing games. So it would be kind of a sports thing. And Jesus is really competitive. That's why he always wins. Inquiring minds want to know. Mm-hmm. And so we have another Lori Ditto video for you. Did you know? And let me just give you kind of the background of what's happening here since we're just playing short clips. Lori actually was taken into heaven and she got to see the uh, heaven's kitchen. And so (laughs) in heaven's kitchen, they're baking the bread of life. And Lori is commissioned to take the bread of life to the nations. So uh, here's Lori talking about recipes. You know, when I was in heaven, I saw a recipe on the wall. There were only three recipes. The angels followed the recipes to the T. The first recipe that was written there was manna. And there was a time when this kitchen, what it made was manna that came down from heaven. And we can read about manna in the Bible. I was excited to see the recipe for manna. And now the kitchen was baking the bread of life, the loaves that I had been told to bring to the people to help them know how to abide in Christ, to show them the triangle. But there was another recipe hanging on the wall. It was called for the wedding of the lamb. This bread was was a twisted bread. When you looked at it, it was gonna be this, this circular bread, kind of what you'd think a crown would look like. And this is the bread that they are going to make at the wedding of the lamb. But here was the problem. They were almost finished making the kind of bread that I had been given. That should alarm some of us. Do you like how she makes this all serious? And that's what she does in in this video. She she tries to take little portions of her heaven visit and then try to tie that in with Bible passages. But she she (laughs) it's just it's just absolutely ridiculous. So she saw the recipe for manna. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why it was still up. I don't either. I <laughs> we haven't needed manna in a long Lord time. Lori needed to and see it, seriously. I guess. So, and bread of life is mm-hmm. another bread, and that's the bread that she's taking to all of us to show us how to abide. Except <laughs> Jesus is the bread of life. John chapter 6, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. This, this is not talking about some kind of heavenly bread. And honestly, if they're almost done making the bread of life, that would mean that we're closer to being right at the end and that's, of time. And I right? think that's her point. Um, but anyway, just it, it's absolutely mind boggling how um, people can take her or the people we're getting ready to show in these other clips seriously. Mm-hmm. Let's read a passage from Revelation that gives us a picture of heaven. Mm-hmm. Revelation 4, 1 through 11. After this I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven, and the first voice which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne stood in heaven with one seated on the throne, and he who sat there had the appearance of jasper and carnelian, and around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. Around the throne were twenty-four thrones, and seated on the thrones were twenty-four elders, clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder, and before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was, as it were, a sea of glass like crystal. And around the throne, on each side of the throne, are four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind, the first living creature like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, the third living creature with the face of a man, and the fourth living creature like an eagle in flight. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within, and day and night they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. 
And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created created. Robin, one of the beautiful things about that passage is how it ties in with Isaiah chapter 6, where Isaiah is in the temple and he sees the Lord seated on his throne Mm -hmm. and the seraphim are uh, crying out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God almighty. The earth is full of his glory. And you can see just how Mm -hmm. those passages tie together. In this passage in Revelation, we see an awesome picture of God and his glory. In these clips that we're about to show you, we see silliness. Um, There's just no comparison between the two. None at all. And speaking of silliness, we're going to show a clip of Glenda Jackson, who goes to heaven and learns about numbers from God. Tell me what God has shown you about the number 666 and things that very few Bible professors ha- understand. Yes, on the number 666, uh, six, six, the Lord told me, I want you to get a piece of paper. I'm going to show you how the Antichrist is going to work through 666. Now, it's going to be the Roman numerals because we're going to, they're going to come back under the Roman Empire and they're going to use the Roman numbers. And he told me, six, when God looks down, when he looks down, it's like he's looking in a mirror, but he sees it right. We're the ones that see it wrong. Well, number six is not man's number, it's Satan's influence on man. Remember when Adam was created, God knew he was going to fall one day short of glory. He made him on the sixth day because he already had everything planned out. So what is the first six in 666? It's I, uh, B-I in Roman numerals. Right. But remember, when God looks down, it's I-V. Hmm. There is your medical under uh, uh, the Antichrist Christ spirit. Every, we're living in a generation where uh, IVs are hooked up, even on your pets. And this is a generation that's going to see more of this than any other time. And the next is number 60, which means pride and the pride of life that it talks about. Now, in Roman numerals, it's uh, LX is 60. But God looks down, and it's reversed, and it's XL. There's your food and your clothes. Hmm. We're living in a time when they're, when I was growing up, people didn't wear extra large. And you didn't go in a restaurant or drive through, and they go, do you want to extra large this? Everything's extra large. And then the last, this really blew me away when God showed me. 600 means warfare. All right, what is 600? It's DC, but you turn it around, it means your banking. CD. And your music, entertainment. We didn't have CDs when we were growing up. And the bank even has CDs now. So everything there is what the flesh cannot get by without. Do you see that? Yes. No, Glenda, we do not get that. I don't think, (laughs) I don't even think Sid got it. (laughs) I think Sid was raising his eyes in some XL disbelief. Yeah. And and, and another thing too, everybody that goes on Sid Roth, they're there to sell their product. Glenda's there to sell her book, to by sell the way. Book. And everybody yep. here that we show, every every clip that we show, mm-hmm. these people have either got a, a video series that they want to sell you or they have a book. So according to Glenda, God sees everything correctly and we're seeing it backwards. So does that whole system work 
in other languages as well, because all of these things would be translated differently from other in other countries in other countries <laughs> unless they're all using the roman system also which i guess they're supposed to be doing at that time look yeah. and i i i totally <laughs> i totally get that um there are some people who really think that they have visions of heaven and maybe they're being deceived by demons but the people that we are showing you today these people are grifters these people are salesmen they're hawking and peddling heaven hawking heaven hawking heaven and speaking of a heaven hawker we have robert slearden talking about splashing with jesus and jesus and i walked up to this branch or tributary of the river of life and jesus stepped into it so i followed him and got into the river of life. Now the river of life does not go around you, it goes through you. Because when you go swimming, your body is waterproof. Your skin and how your body operates keeps water on the outside. So you're not like a sponge that shrinks or soaks up and falls to the bottom of the, of the pool or wherever you're swimming. But you're not life proof. And when you step into the river of life, you can feel it go through your legs and you can feel the energy or the, the life, as you want to call it that, as it went through you, you could feel it. So you don't want to miss that when you get to heaven. It's a great, great thing to have it go through you and feel that life or that energy as it goes through your legs. Now, I'm about to tell you something that you may not like, but it happened. Jesus reached over and threw me under the water. I came up, splashed him back, and we had a water fight in the river of life. Out of all the things that I share about this, and I get lots of letters and emails, this is the number one thing people say, how dare you splash Jesus? And I must say, he started it. Now, as funny as that may be for some of you and for other, how dare you? I dare because he started it. I'm an Oklahoma country boy, so when you splash me, you get it back. For me, that was the moment when Jesus became my friend. For an eight-year-old, I understood water fights. I don't understand theological terms. I don't understand I love you terms. I understood actions that an eight-year-old processed as my friend. That was the day that Jesus became my friend. All right, so Robin, um, let's talk a little bit about Robert Slearden because Learden wrote the very popular book, God's Generals. It's used in ministry schools. Right. I think BSSM uses the book as a, a textbook. Yeah. Um, he talks in, in, in that book, he talks about people like John Alexander Dowie, uh, John G. Lay, Catherine Kuhlman, Catherine Kuhlman and, and others. McPherson. Yep. yep. And he, the, these are the, these are the generals. And mm -hmm. um, he really does some shoddy um historical work with them. And one of the things that's really interesting about that is in the very beginning of the book, actually in the introduction and in the preface, because his mother wrote the preface. Mm -hmm. And so both his mother and uh, Learden says that God appeared to him in a vision and told him to write um, or, or, or told him to research the early Pentecostal leaders. And that was a mandate directly from God, and then he, he writes the book. Also, one of the endorsements in the book or, is Mar Cirillo. And Mar Cirillo says, and, and I quote, this book is not from a man, but from the Holy Spirit. So <laughs> Learden is a big deal within, um, as far as a supposed right. historian, Pentecostal, early Pentecostal historian. Um, and, and generally what happens is people will read that and take it as gospel truth and they will not do any further research mm -hmm. and it would be very easy to research one of the characters he writes about and find a lot of information that he fails to 
divulge. There are a lot of um, failings among these generals. Um, many of them were cons. Learden himself stepped away from the pulpit, uh, I think, in 2003 for a moral failure, and then he comes back. So, I mean, these guys, and then he's going to tell us that he went to heaven, and he goes into the river of life as a little child and, and has a water fight with Jesus. And I think John MacArthur, in his book, Charismatic Chaos, actually mentions that story in there. And I used to think his name was pronounced Lyardon. That's <laughs> because of the it first. may be. Yeah. But um, so anyway, he he gets in the river of life and he, he begins to describe, you know, that the water goes through you and it's the energy. And that's that's a clip from um, an hour long video about his description of heaven. And believe me, some of the descriptions that he gives about his experience in heaven is just as, it, I, I'm just going to say they're, they're pretty cat cur. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Let's go to God's Word and, and read some more about what God's Word says about heaven. Isaiah 25, 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. That is a beautiful passage mm. of scripture. And it what is it, it what does it tie to? It, it ties right back into you'll hear that again in revelation 21 yes and um so you see how the bible is just it just inner it, it ties itself together it's just a beautiful thing when you see that beautiful passage yeah. of scripture it is uh, our next clip is candace smithyman and i've taken many trips to heaven i can tell you there is no tears there it is full of laughter and joy i speak about that in my book releasing heaven creating supernatural environments through heavenly encounters i actually saw the royal banquet table wow and it was jesus was at the head of the table and he was laughing he was full of joy and that is how it's going to be at the royal banquet dinner when he marries the bride it is a place that exists all of us are sitting around and we're enjoying one another yes you are enjoying the people to your right and left and across from you there is um everyone is in agreement it's unity it's love and jesus is laughing and he is holding up of his golden chalice and he is when he laughs the glory of the Lord is released upon us all it's beautiful it's amazing laughter is a part of heaven laughter is a part of heaven now of course there's going to be joy in heaven but did you notice her book popping up there at the very beginning of the clip there mm. I did that on purpose by the way one of her many trips to heaven mm -hmm. yeah yes Revelation 19 6 through 10 then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the roar of many waters and like the sound of mighty peals of thunder, crying out, Alleluia, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true words of God. Then I fell down at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The book of Revelation was written to seven churches who were either experiencing or about to experience great persecution. So what John sees in Revelation is, is, is there to encourage mm. those believers that were about to suffer some intense persecution. And so mm. when you take, when you look at these pictures and you see these pictures that um, the Holy Spirit gives us in the book of Revelation, these, these are to comfort us. 
Nowhere are we told some of the ridiculous descriptions in the Bible that these people have. God shows us what he wants us to see uh, as far as heaven, the new Jerusalem, uh, uh, you know, um, the new heaven and the new earth. He, he gives us what he wants us to see in the Bible. He does not. It, I, can, I promise you, I promise you, none of these people have ever truly visited heaven. Well, James Gall begs to differ. He said he took a tour of heaven. I was in heaven. I was walking in heaven. I was taken into a great hall, and it was a hallway, and my guide was the faceless man. In other words, my guide was the Holy Spirit himself. And he starts walking me going before me through this hall of champions of the faith. And I could look at them on this side and on that side, and some of them I recognized by pictures, and some of them my knower knew, and then some of them were people I've known literally in my lifetime. I'm walking down I'm walking in heaven down the hallway. By the way, you know, the Hebrews chapter 11 talks about the hall of faith. Right. I think I was experiencing this. I'm walking down this hallway of the heroes of faith. Hmm. I saw, knew that William and Catherine Booth were, were there. I saw. I saw people who had birthed movements of the Holy Spirit. I saw William Seymour, the one-eyed black preacher from uh, Azusa Street. I saw him in that hallway of heaven. I saw John Wesley, which I come from a Wesleyan background. I saw him. I saw Catherine Kuhlman. Did you I give her my regards? <laughs> well, I didn't, Easy, but yeah. if I see her again, I'll think about it, okay? okay? <laughs> I mean, I was honored, humbled, going like, what's really going on uh, that I knew just to keep following my guide, my guide, my leader, the Holy Spirit. He's taking me down this hallway, and as I did, they would stand up. And they were applauding. And I'm going, what's going on? And they were communicating that they were so glad that there are people today who keep their hand on the plow, don't give up, and that there are new movements of the Holy Spirit getting pioneered, and they who had started movements were looking in in this hallway of the champions of faith, and they were going, we're so glad you're carrying on. We're so glad you didn't quit. We're so glad. Keep going. They were cheering me. Wow. So James Gall's spirit guide was leading him down a hallway um, and these spirits that uh, were there were cheering him on. And the spirit guide, the Holy Spirit, he faceless says, man. a faceless man. That brought back a memory of Bob Jones mm -hmm. and his experience when he took a trip to heaven. He was ushered around by a faceless man who he said was the Holy Spirit. But that was just disturbing it very it really was disturbing and something that i thought about as i'm watching this thing um and now we have pictures in scripture of heaven right of of heaven of the new jerusalem of um the new the new heavens you know in revelation and they look nothing like what these people are saying that they see and they would say that that's because they have received new revelation right mm -hmm. But even if that that's not true, but even if that was true, wouldn't their 
visions or their experiences be at least somewhat uh, similar to what we see in Scripture, they go way off base, you know, yeah. way out there. And Danny, he mentioned something that really bothered me, the new moves of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Like, what is the the whole crux of the Holy Spirit is to point to Jesus? That's all that the Bible is. I mean, yes, there, there, there are, you know, sub uh, topics within Scripture, but all of Scripture is about Christ from Genesis to Revelation. I just I think of I think it's Luke 24, I think, where we have the uh, Jesus walking on the road to Emmaus. And at the end of the discussion with those disciples, he opens their eyes and he tells them that all of the scriptures are about him. These people are bringing you nothing but distractions. They're not talking about Christ or his work for you, his death and resurrection, bleeding and dying and paying the penalty for your sins. They are distracting you with silly, made-up stories. And Jude actually warns us about people like what you're watching now. 2 Corinthians 12, 2-4. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man was caught up into paradise, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And he heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. I know that we have talked about this passage of scripture before, but I just... I want us to just think about what the Apostle Paul saying. First of all, think about who's saying this. This is the Apostle Paul, the author of 13 books within the New Testament. And he's saying that he was not allowed to describe the events that he saw when he was in the third heaven. And yet these yahoos, they get to tell all about it. And the purpose for their descriptions is a book or series video series so if they're right then what changed between mm -hmm. paul writing the, the new testament when god says you may not share any of this to now when dozens and dozens and dozens of people can go to heaven and share the information again and and that's it's money i mean that's what it is it's it's monetary gain that's why these people are are doing this it's terrible so. terrible um, our next clip is by Richard Sigmund talking about the banks in heaven. There is also a bank in heaven, our bank. This is how it works. Every time you give anything, it is recorded in heaven. Angels go to a doorway with a slip. They receive golden coins and bring them to earth. The coins are changed to what we need on earth. These are supernatural finances. Uh, that was a short one, but uh, very informative, wasn't it? It was. I didn't know heaven had a bank. Hmm. Um, saving one of our regular heaven visitors. Visitors for last. <laughs> We're just going to show you a little bit of cat cur. There are places in heaven they can go that is for a play area that, yes, you can actually change. You can be smaller, you can be larger. Uh, I think that you can become a cartoon in certain areas and then you play out cartoons with your friends. You actually are in the cartoon. So he's absolutely right. And I, you said in certain places, are there, because it, it sounds like a, what would be a term? It sounds like a fun zone or a fun village or, or something. There are places that. It is usually in the amusement park. There's a lot of things going on similar to that. They have all kinds of things that you can do. You can travel different ways, like in bubbles. Um, uh, you can go up to uh, different places for the, the play places in the sky. I know it sounds crazy, but it's heaven. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's very different. And when you go there, you expect some of those things to happen. Well, I got to ask you when a lady wrote to me, I didn't respond to her today because I didn't know how to respond because I, I don't have an answer for everybody's question. But she wrote, she's very nice about it, but she says, but I'm quite certain there's no cotton candy in heaven. So apparently she heard that you 
had said there was cotton candy in heaven. And that my, my thing would have been, if I'd written there, why, what would prevent God from giving a delicious cotton candy that would be the Nothing. best? Cotton? Yeah, so um, talk to people about the funness, the giddiness, the laughter, the hilarity of God, because we get the holy thing. We, we've been taught, I don't know, we don't have it down, but we've been taught the holy side. We have not been taught the fun side. I mean, what would you like to tell people that say they're I tuning in for the first say, time? I would say the same thing that the father said to me. If he didn't make fun places in heaven, he'd be in trouble with all those kids coming home. All right. Robin, I know we make light of Kat Kerr. We make fun because she's so out there. But this is really sad. This is this is really sad. Why don't we... Um, Let's go to Revelation 6, 9 through 11. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the witness they had borne. They cried out with a loud voice, O sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you will judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then they were each given a white robe and told to rest a little longer until the number of their fellow servants and their brothers should be complete, who were to be killed as they themselves had been. In the Cat Kerr clip, she says, I know it sounds crazy, but it's heaven. Folks, heaven is not crazy. And the martyrs in that passage were not given cotton candy. They were given white robes and they were told to wait a little while until their brothers had been slain for the testimony of Jesus. Mm. This is what we are seeing here in these clips is just absolute blasphemy. It's utter blasphemy. Um, let's look at Revelation 22, 1 through 5. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. Also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. So Robin, did that passage of Scripture sound anything like what we saw being described in these video clips. It sounds like there are two different heavens, the mm -hmm. heaven of God's word and the heaven of these people that are visiting someplace. Someplace, but it's not heaven. Folks, thanks so much for watching. Bye.